Hello everyone, I'm Nare Kim, Associate Pastor of the Bell UMC and this is our virtual service for Ash Wednesday. Greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. God of our salvation, we embark this day on a journey that we have made before, a journey that will once again sweep us into unexpected places, always in pursuit of the path of your obedient son. Send your Holy Spirit to open our lips that our mouths may declare your praise, and we may be guided on this path of patience, prayer, and preparation. Amen. Yeah. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look to small like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Well, a happy Ash Wednesday to everybody. It's, it's weird doing virtual worship. Uh, one thing I've learned during the pandemic is I love Jesus, but I really hate Zoom, particularly when you get six Zoom meetings in a day. That's no good. I heard one of my friends had that. 
But it's particularly hard on a day like this when we count on certain rituals to mark the occasion, like ashes on our forehead. And it is worth mentioning at this point that there are many people within the body of Christ who have never celebrated Ash Wednesday. And they would offer a criticism of those of us who do, saying, uh, you're a little too ritualistic. Aren't you getting tied up in the ritual and maybe forgetting what the ritual uh, represents? Well, maybe we can receive that criticism in a year like this. You know, we haven't been able to meet in person for some time, and we've had a chance to focus on these rituals and their importance and the, and the church and the life of the church and its importance in our life. Um, why do we do what we do? And, and does it really make a difference? Does it really matter? Uh, this year, there will be no imposition of ashes. Uh, instead, we're sending a newsletter, and you'll have some uh, uh, articles in there that will help you, I'm sure, to grow. But maybe no ashes on Ash Wednesday can serve as a reminder and can shift the focus from the mark on our foreheads to the stain that's in our hearts that we need to get rid of. Uh, perhaps the, the focus this year, I pray, will move from the actual ashes that we put on our forehead to the, the confession and the repentance that those ashes represent. I think that's what the law and the prophets and Jesus and everybody has been getting around to uh, over the years in our life of faith. And I think that's what Joel was getting to this morning uh, in, his, in his scripture that I'll read to you. The, it's morning here anyway. Uh, you'll see this this evening, but this is Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It's near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes, like never has been from of old and never will be again in the ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and he relents from punishing. Who knows? Rather, he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people together. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? You know, when all this began about a, a year ago, we knew that some tough times were coming, and, and at that time somebody was around Lent, and somebody said, this will be the lentiest Lent that ever Lented. So stay-at-home orders, lockdowns, shelter-in-place, pandemic, we couldn't even fathom those words in the not-so-distant uh, past, but now they're just a part of the everyday language. We've been through an awful lot. So I guess what I'm saying here is, God, don't you think maybe we could just skip Lent this year? This, why do the lentiest Lent that ever Lented version 2.0? Can't we just skip all the preparation, all the fasting, all the self-denial, all the repentance, all the confession, all that putting your spiritual house in order thing? Can't we just skip that because we've had a tough year? No, we can't. You know, the work of spiritual growth has never been easier. The harder it is, sometimes the more you grow. Jesus said, if somebody asks you to go one mile, go with them too you got to go that extra mile in your faith. In our life of faith, we're continually called to go that extra mile, to push beyond what we knew that we had. Uh, we've all taken on new hobbies during this pandemic, I guess. At least a lot of us have. And uh, one of the things I've really enjoyed doing um, is watching YouTube videos of some of the great heavyweight boxers of all time. You look at Rocky Marciano. He was never, ever defeated. He was never beaten even once in his career. You look at Muhammad Ali. Float like a butterfly. Sting like a bee. He could explode with, with greatness and unleash a flurry and, and win a fight at any time. Lennox Lewis beat every person he ever faced. He was not undefeated. He got beaten by a few guys, but then he beat them later down the road. I like Big George Foreman in any era against any boxer. But Roy Jones Jr. was my favorite to watch because he could hit you anytime, anywhere. He was really, really fast. Evander Holyfield, the warrior, the real deal. He could take you the distance. Iron Mike Tyson, Still, at the age of, I think he's almost 55, can knock your block off. But he said something interesting. He just had this big pay-per-view fight, and after the fight, he said in the press conference, it's not always about knockouts. It's not about knocking somebody's block off. It's about going the distance. That's fighting. 
You know what? That's a lot of wisdom from Mike Tyson there, and, and it's right. All of those boxers I just mentioned, uh, not only could they give a blow, they could take one. And they could keep going, even after the tank was empty. They fought, even after they themselves got hurt. And all of them were prepared to go the distance. And everybody, None of those guys ever came into a fight and said, I think I'll lose this fight, or I'm not going to give it my all. They were ready to go the distance. We can learn a lot from these great heavyweights, right? You got to take a blow, be able to take a blow in life. You got to keep going when the tank is empty. You got to fight when you're hurt. You got to be ready to go the distance. But it's a struggle to grow spiritually. There's always a roadblock, but there's no roadblock that we can't overcome with the help of God. The name Israel, the name that God gave to his people, means to struggle, to wrestle with God, like Jacob did. If you're not wrestling with your faith, then frankly, you're just not even engaging it if there's not some challenge to it at some point. Growing in faith is tough. There's an awful lot of hard knocks you have to take. It's always inconvenient to embrace spiritual growth. There's always a hindrance. There's always something in the way. There's always something we need to take care of first. But the prophet Joel even says, let the bridegroom and uh, the bride and the groom, what he basically says, let the bride and groom leave their honeymoon bed. That's how important this is. This is real important. That is the, uh, not a phone call, that is a fax machine, I, I apologize. It's that important. Just leave everything. No matter what you're doing, drop it. But there's always something in the way of doing that. I preached this last uh, past week on, on Rome. What's that? Rome is that one nagging thing that keeps hanging around. It's in your way. You think it's getting in your way, but do you really think about it? God's probably using it in some way to teach you something. Yeah, I hate Zoom. I hate the interruptions. I hate editing uh, uh, all of these videos. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a big learning curve. But at any rate, I'm glad we're here, even if it is virtual. Because only the diehards come to Ash Wednesday. Only the diehards bother to watch a video like this that somebody put together, right? You're tuning in right now because you want to grow. This season of Lent, it doesn't need to be sad and somber, but it does need to be intense. We need to approach it seriously, and we need to approach it vigorously. We need to bring our whole self to this Lent, the Lentiest Lent that ever Lent in version 2.0. And it's about so much more than giving up chocolate or a Netflix TV series. It's so much, much, much more than that. It's about becoming part of the solemn assembly that Joel speaks of, the one that embraces confession and repentance. You know, Ash Wednesday calls us to do something that we're all pretty bad at, and that is to self-reflect. But it's not just about self-reflection. That's hard enough. But as hard as that is, when we reflect on what's going on in our lives, we need to be able then to say, oh, and that's something I need to repent from. That's hard. And then we got to take the next step, which is even harder than that, and come to the point where we can confess it. That's hard work. And you can see why we try to make it about giving up chocolate or not watching this or that on television. It's a lot easier than doing the real work of Lent. You know, those things like giving up chocolate, giving up this or that, yes, they can be helpful, but they can also shut out the spirit if that's what we make Lent all about. Lent is about one thing, embracing spiritual growth. And for our congregation at this time that we find ourselves in, this embracing spiritual growth, I believe, takes two forms. Number one, that we learn and begin to embrace an inward spirituality. That is that we get real with God, symbolism, ritual, put it behind for a moment and get real with God. I knew one time a street preacher in Baltimore, and he had a, a downtown Bible study in the middle of the day. He used to get like 100 people. It was really a wonderful thing. And, you know, he'd ask for prayer requests at the end. What are you really struggling with? And people would say, he, he used to tell me, oh, Frankie, it's terrible. They'd just say, oh, I'm so stressed at work and da-da-da. And he said, one day you just had enough. He said, stop. I don't care about work. How many of you have an affairs right now? Well, you know, if you think about it, when you got got 100 people in the room, if you look at the stats, it's going to be pretty high. That's getting real, right? How many of you have had an affair in the last year? That's getting real. Can we get real for a moment? Because I think that that's what God is saying to us on this Ash Wednesday and has indeed been saying this to us since the pandemic began and even before. Can we get real? And the gospel reading this, morning, the, this afternoon, or uh, whenever you're watching this, reminds us of that very, very clearly. We're not to do things to be seen of others. 
and Christians have embraced that for a very long time. And the, the intentions are not malicious. We simply want to be a good witness and want people to see that good witness. But these days and moving forward, perhaps our best witness is to slow down, listen, and embrace one another, truly. Not wait till somebody meets our definition of what they need to to be a good Christian before we embrace them, but truly embrace them for who and what they are. I think we need to extend that warm welcome. That's the second thing I think that spiritual growth means for us during the season of Lent. You know, there was a service person in the church here today, and uh, of course I'm very busy with Ash Wednesday, and this person was doing what they were doing, whatever they came into the church for, and we were talking about, it struck up conversation, and we're talking, and I, before he left, I said, oh, by the way, happy Ash Wednesday, and he said, ha, 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 whatever that is, and left. Now we can approach that two different ways. We can say, isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible he doesn't know? Why doesn't he know what Ash Wednesday is? Didn't somebody teach him? Didn't he listen? Or we can say, isn't that terrible that they don't know what Ash Wednesday is? Why don't you come and join me today? You know, I pray that during the season of Lent, the Lentiest Lent that ever Lented, version 2.0, that we receive anew this call to grow spiritually, to make disciples, to extend a warm welcome, to realize it really has nothing to do with us. It's not about us. Too often we show up and we're ready to give or to receive, but not always to give back. Very often we believe in serve us instead of service. And I encourage you again today, as we do every year at this time of the year in Lent, to take your commitment to Christ and your church seriously. We're coming out of a very difficult time and into a future that is very uncertain. And moving forward, we can't do the same old things the same old way. It won't work. As we emerge from COVID, I think that when it comes to their faith, people will either take it or leave it. They're going to look at this time and say, well, yeah, I didn't really miss the church, and they didn't really reach out, so goodbye. It didn't do anything for me. I didn't do anything for it. So I just won't engage after the pandemic. Well, guess what? Pandemic or no pandemic, that's really the way things were, <laughs> right? Others will have found new connections in Christ during the pandemic, both online or across radio waves or through some other means in which God has been working behind the scenes and we have no idea. I think we're going to see a lot of that. But those individuals will come to the church and they're going to be hungry and they're going to be ready to grow. And we have to be ready as the body of Christ to provide that. So your job is to show everybody out there why they should take their faith and not leave it. That's going to be your job. Through this Lentius Lent that ever Lented, version 2.0, God is changing us, and God is changing the church. He's challenging our embrace. When we embrace the new people and the new challenges that come our way during this season, I pray that we will. He's changing us to open up our minds and to respect people, to respect each other. He's challenging our commitment. What do you really need the church for? Why do you need the church? Why does the church need you? Think about these things for a moment. That's what Lent is for. Perhaps even comment below, why does the world even need the church? Why does LaVale need our congregation? Whatever your answer to that question is, that's your calling. Seriously, that's your calling. That's what God wants you to do this year, and perhaps in addition to giving up chocolate and whatever else you're doing. But don't wait. Don't wait even until tomorrow. Don't wait till Lent. Don't wait till Easter. Whatever that one thing is that people really need the church and Jesus for, that's what you get to dive into this coming year. Begin step one tonight. Pray with me. Lord, truly, you have put us through the ringer. There have been many tests, some of which we failed, some of which we have passed. Lord, as we prepare to emerge from this very difficult time together, be with us and show us the way. Lord, you're calling us to grow to a deeper spirituality. So, Lord, help us to be ready to be challenged. Help us to be ready to invite all those around us. Help us to be willing, Lord, to extend that all-important invitation to repent and believe the gospel. God bless you, thank you, and we love you. This is my devotion on Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 1 through 6, and 16 to 21. Today, many things are instantly available to us. Instant camera, instant glue, instant noodles, prime delivery, 
Prime Day Delivery, One Day Delivery, Eastern Pot, and many, many more. I like Eastern stuff for their convenience, time saving, and availability. Because when I want something, I want it now. Sometimes I saw something online and I want it, so I ordered it instantly with one click and it takes a week to deliver. When you finally arrive, finally arrive, I already forgot that I bought this and realized that it wasn't really necessary or something I really wanted. In today's text, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 through 6 and 16 to 21, it talks about the instant reward or praise you get when others see you practicing piety, giving, praying, and fasting. We are so used to getting instant praise by others through using our social media. There are like there are like buttons or love buttons that you can receive from others for your posting. When we are texting, emailing, uh, posting on Facebook or Instagram, we receive or expect to receive the response from others instantly, especially the like or heart responses. I'm not saying that posting on your social media is bad. People want to be communicative and show empathy or receive empathy with others. I think that's what makes us human. And that is the reason why Lent is not an easy time to spend. People have access to let their friends know what they had for breakfast, to what kind of natural sound diet that they listen before they go to bed. When you post something, you can get instant responses from others. Following Lent is a 40 days of long period of preparation, of fasting and self-denial, of repentance and confession, and putting our spiritual house in order. In addition, Jesus teaches us in today's gospel lesson that we must not let our left hand know what our right hand does, so that our merciful deeds may be in secret and must enter into our inner room and having shut the door, pray to our Father who is in secret and must anoint our head and wash our face so that we are not seen by men to be fasting but our Father who is in secret. And our Father who sees in secret will reward us. So we can agree that Lent is something against our desires. Our desires to be instantly filled our needs and be recognized. Also, it seems like we had the Lentist Lent all year long since last year's Lent. I just want to encourage you from the first day of our 40 day long Lent of self-examination and reflection, repentance, deepening our relationship with God in Jesus Christ. Be aware that this season leads up to Easter. Lent is not a destination, it is a journey and process. Let us claim the life that Jesus Christ described it and lives out before us to embrace the joy of life of faith. Amen. This is the invitation to the observance of Lenten discipline. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the Church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for the Holy Baptism, it was also a time when persons who had committed serious sin and had separated themselves from the community of faith 
were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need all we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditation on God's holy world. To make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our moral nature, let us now fall before our Creator and Redeemer. Psalms 51, 1-17 have mercy, me, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thro thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I, indeed I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me my wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create me in a clean heart, or create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and I will tongue my and I and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare, declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. And sacrifice acceptable um, to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Let us offer prayers of confession and silence. May the Almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
and receive this benediction. Happy are they who know where the real treasure is to be found, and happy are those who take from this treasure and share it. Friends of God, be prepared to leave wherever it is that you are, and spirits that are lighter than when you came in. Trust Christ to take an intimate interest in the costly investment that he has made in you. And now invest that same love that he has invested in you into other people, rejoicing in the fellowship of the Spirit. And the blessing of the eternal God be upon you. His redeeming grace is enfolding love, his enduring fellowship, now and forever. Amen and amen.